Okay, welcome to the pit, and here we are. Uh, let's get some nesting set up real quick, and by nesting, the basic configuration of the cockpit uh, before we even start. Um, we'll actually go through the f entirety of the full startup, if I can remember it, uh, from when I was an F-16 crew chief. Um, so what we're doing right now is configuring the avionics, or, or what we can. Um, for our engine start. We'll leave this panel completely dark. Instrument panel, and then we'll set the air source to norm. Okay, so that's pretty much a, the cold cockpit startup uh, or initiation here. So what we'll do is we'll apply battery power and then right click JFS Start 2. As you can hear, the JFS is running, so it takes approximately 60 seconds to get up to 20%, which is in the RPM gauge here. And uh, once we get to the RPM cage, I'm sorry, RPM gauge at 20%, we'll um, we'll move the throttle up and then hit the detent uh, for the throttle to initiate the uh, over the horn, so to speak, uh, getting the throttle in position. Um, in normal full start procedures, we would have gone through okay. with this, but uh, it's a sim. We know it works. I'm not expecting it not to work. So we're at 20% right now. Move the throttle a little bit. Make sure that your uh, throttle is working before you do this. And as you can see, the RPM should be climbing. And it should be climbing. There we go. I guess I didn't click the first time. Uh, once we get a air, or engine electrical power through the um, through the alternator or the generator or as we call it on the N16, uh, you're going to see that we're going to transition from battery power, and uh, all the instrument lights should come on. Okay, I'm going to close the canopy. Start up by bringing up some of the avionics here. Altimeter, DED data, set it to the barrow. Bring the IS knob to norm. Start firing up our avionics here. Awesome. Master caution reset, no dummy lights here. We'll uh, simulate that we have a good crew chief out on the outside of the jet here, and then he's given us all clear for the sec. So we'll go to secondary airspeed, close this not all, verify that, 0%, bring the throttle up, make sure we got good RPM, 80%, looks good. Alright, bring the throttle back down, and sec, nozzle should be at 100%. Uh, from here we'll initiate a flicus bit, and then we're looking for the faults here, uh, if there are any. INS is spinning up, which is good, and we'll go and turn on the HUD here in a second. Uh, this control panel here is for avionics for the uh, RAR gear. Parking brake should have been on too, error on my part, but we have the shocks in, so that's fine. HUD is this knob right here, coming up. In reality, before the bit check, we would have done an EPU bleed air check, which is um, right here but uh, no need for it in this sim. Um, okay, it looks like the bit is complete. We'll go ahead and hit the uh, acknowledge for the uh, fault acknowledge for the pilot display here. Let's go and load up the DTE or the data cartridge. Looks good. And the way that we know we have our data cartridge set is that we can set tower 15 should be 2923. Is the radio even on? No, because I'm an idiot. COM2. Threat. Should have this should have been done on the um, the pre-startup procedures. Alright, so radio is on. We'll set uh, uniform one five. Enter. 
And that should be two nine Python two. Python one one Kunshan Tower. You are cleared for takeoff. Runway one eight. Okay. Uh, let's request a QFE. Python one one copy. Python one Kunshan approach three zero five eight. 3058 matches with my local altimeter setting set. Uh, once we get rid of the chocks, which we'll do now, we'll switch frequencies. It's one 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 one. Copy. We got the parking brake on, so we'll switch to uniform 17. In a real airfield, or in a sim with other people, we would stay on tower frequency to deconflict, but that is not an issue. Uh, you're going to notice here that we have their seat not armed warning. We can go on arm right here. I'm not actually in the plane, right? So I don't really care. And the store's config is because we're set category one. And that is set specifically because uh, if we have to jettison, I'd want full control authority over the jet. Uh, in real plane, you'd know what 6Gs feels like. So you wouldn't actually over-G the plane. Uh, or you, you could, but most people don't. All right, INS is fully aligned. 3.0 to 3.0. We hit the nav knob. How we know that's good is that we have the map data on the HSD populated completely. And we have our flight plan that we discussed earlier. And then uh, we can go ahead and go to CRM mode and override for the F fire control radar. Moving down further uh, for the takeoff, I'll go to radar altimeter and then you'll see me switch to Barrow uh, once we take off. All right, from here, I'll go and check the uh, HMCS on the queuing system. DMS down long initiates it. Looks good. Turn that off. And we're pretty much ready to taxi now. By now, in the real F-16, we would have done a full flight control check, uh, speed brakes and all that good stuff, a brake check, and then we'd be on our way. Uh, but we don't have a real crew chief or a simulated one, so we'll just go and hit this. Turn the nose wheel steering on by shift right uh, backslash, and then we're off to taxi. Uh, we're at Kunsan, so we have two options. We have a north or south departure. We'll go and take the uh, south departure to the north. Uh, we'll depart from the south to the north, and then uh, check right for our initial steer point, which is steer two. Alright, I usually leave the INS page up just to make sure that all of the symbology and the coefficients on the DED, which is this panel here, um, match up correctly. And once we're done with that, we'll go and hit return, close out the ICP. Uh, before we take off, I'll make some slight adjustments to the uh, inner, the uh, uh, ICP here, the control panel, interface control panel, and uh, we'll set our bingo our radar, or I'm sorry, our uh, altitude limits, and uh, we'll take a look at our cruise tab for the uh, carrot speeds and all that good stuff. Turn up some volume here so I can hear the hell I'm doing. The real Viper, you'd leave their radar off uh, while you're taxiing, mainly because you don't want to irradiate all the ground crew. Uh, but for this example, we'll go and uh, do our own before takeoff checklist at the EOR, which is end of runway inspection, and um, we'll verify all of our stuff is set up before we go off. By now, our targeting pod should be good to go. Uh, we're in nav mode, set that up. Air to ground mode, we'll set that up. And back to nav. Good brake check. We're just doing uh, end of runway departure, or we'll hold here, and then we'll uh, go over some stuff with the interface control panel. Oh, 
Okay, we're holding short. Perk and break is set, and uh, we'll go through the list here. So we're gonna set our bingo to, uh, let's call it 3,000 pounds. That's our divert fuel that I actually need to no shit go home or to an, an alternate airfield. Uh, set a mental bingo at 6,000 pounds. List. Uh, back out to the main page, hit allow. Set our uh, allowed. We'll set to. We're not going to exceed 15,000 feet. That'll be our queue. Okay. Bingo set. Need to check the cruise tab. Okay. What did we set 20? What was it 21? Eh. Whatever. We'll just set steer two for now. And we'll figure out our nav after the fact. Okay, let's go and take the active. Parking brakes off. Checked the departure or arrival end of the runway. Line up. We'll verify that we have runway 36 on our HUD. Uh, that matches up with our compass heading. Okay. Up to 80, up to 90, off the brakes. We're going to rotate at about 140, 150, and uh, lift off should be about 165, 170 with this weight. Nose wheels off, 100 knot check, good. 150, rotate. Really heavy weight. We'll do a max performance takeoff, uh, looking for about 400 knots on the departure end. Okay, there we go with the pull. 